So today, let's continue this little devlog series where I show you how I made my current game project, Machem. An action chill puzzle game with shapes and colors that will release on Steam at the end of the year, in December 2024. As usual, don't forget that if you want to learn more and support the project, you can go to the Steam page and add it to your wishlist to help it get noticed. And if you want to go even further, you can participate in the playtest for free and become a Machemia yourself. Then fill in the online feedback form to give me all of your impressions and ideas. All you playtesters have helped me improve Machem so much, so a huge thanks to all of you, and well to you who's watching, if you decided to join us. Okay, so, so far I've showed you how, for several weeks, I prepared all my core game logic for the runner mode. At first it was about checking that it could actually be a somewhat fun experience, and then I worked on the level editor, and I added a bunch of features to make this mode more interesting. But at that point, there was still a big issue. Because all the data was local on the disk, there was basically no way for creators to share the levels with the community. So all this big idea of having everyone exchange and play each other's levels in the future was simply impossible. So to fix this, I needed to export all of this runner level data to an external server. And then the game would reread the list from this server to give players the latest data instantly without them having to update their own copy of the game at any point. For the server, I actually made a very basic REST API in PHP. And then, thanks to Godot's HTTP request node, I could just get or send data from and to this server to retrieve or update the levels list and the content of each level. This is a lot of behind-the-scenes logic that I won't get too much into today, but as usual, if you're curious, tell me in the comments and I might make more videos on how to set up this kind of system in Godot. Of course, parallel to this custom server API and storing the data in an external place, I also needed to identify who was playing the game, to be able to mark them as the author of the levels or record some playing stats. For that, I decided that I'd directly get the player's Steam ID and use that as authentication. So I actually found a super nice plugin called Godot Steam, that is pretty famous and really easy to use and really powerful, and so all that made it quite easy to autolog the player if the game was running from Steam. In the end, I had this amazing sense of accomplishment when I finally got my little Steam card in the bottom right corner of my splash screen and I could actually access the Steam interface like a real game. Except, yes, during the test, I was pretending that my app was actually Mini Metro, because my game didn't exist yet at that point. So this was really cool, and I was pretty happy that I managed to step all of this, but then I started to think that playing wasn't really as fun as it could be, because right now, my runner mode was missing some cool VFX and sound effects. So this is what we'll talk about in the next episode. And in the meantime, tell me what you think about Matchem, if you like the game concept, if you have any ideas for features I could add to make it even better, and of course you can share all of this either in the comments down below or with the online feedback form, and then don't forget to hop by the Steam page to add the game to your wishlist. It will really help make the project succeed, so thank you. And on that note, as always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.